everybody. Welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Heather Gardner. I'm Noah Michelson. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Woo! everyone. Today we're going to talk about HBO's Leaving Neverland documentary on Michael Jackson and a new makeup palette based on a fan favorite TV show. Plus, actress Quinn Walters joins the table to discuss a Medea family funeral, but first... But first, it's time for our In Case You Missed It by HuffPost segment. The 91st Academy Awards took place last night in Los Angeles, and many of this year's top film contenders were in attendance. Here to chat with us about the 2019 Oscars is the host of In Case You Missed It by HuffPost, Heather Gardner, and editorial director of HuffPost Personal, Noah Michelson. Woo Thanks! All right, guys. The first time in 30 years that the Oscars went without a host. What yeah. did we think? Uh, I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. I, thought I thought it was, it was so terrible. refreshing. I honestly did not miss having a host one bit. I thought the show was still super long. Like mm -hmm. by yeah. 11 o'clock, I was like, you know what? Thank God we didn't have a host. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially yeah. someone who was going to be yelling the whole time. Yeah. yeah. I have to say, I only care about the opening monologue really when it comes to a host. And Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, and Maya Rudolph basically did yeah. that. Yeah. So they basically had these like pseudo hosts that just started off the show and then everybody just took it from there. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't feel like I missed anything. And the I way either. that we watch award shows now, I feel like, is like people watch clips the next day or yeah. we just watch it piecemeal. And so I don't even know if we need a host anymore. We don't need someone host. like leading us through it. Right, host or no host, it's still gonna be super boring. <laughs> yeah. And too long. But yeah. out of principle, I do believe in the role of a host so because I, yeah. we are all hosts. So <laughs> I don't like that picture. Well, yeah, yeah, it's an important role. To be a host, I'm not gonna minimize that role, but I did. I thought they did I'm a good job. I'm calling for they the did. elimination of all hosts everywhere. <laughs> Let's see how right, Bill Brunch does. We're done, out. Out. Yeah, oh. go, go. Bye. Yeah. No, but you're right, the presenters did such a really great job. Yeah. And I I think my favorite, of course, the trio right at the top, Tina yeah. and Maya. Um, but I loved Melissa McCarthy too when she came out. She stole oh, the so show. Good. She did. All the rabbits. I, I thought so that great. was so dumb. Really? Yeah. 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 I was like, are people laughing at this? This is like so stupid. Wait, when did you, you see the little favorite? rabbit puppet though? That yeah, kind of got me. Yeah, I saw the favorite. Great. I just it well, kind of I, didn't see it. I think her and Brian, um, Henry, they, they yeah. were such an interesting pair. I actually liked them. I, I don't know, her with Elizabeth the first hair wig and then the <laughs> Queen Anne outfit with the bunnies. I thought that was really okay, funny. I I just the the fact that I feel like because there wasn't a host, yeah. every category was just like reaching so hard yeah. to like do a bit, and I'm just like, okay, like who did the bit where they were like talking quietly and then loudly? Oh, Diane, oh, yeah, yeah. Diane Guerra, and, like, and, and, yeah. and then every time she spoke, James McAvoy was like. Ooh, and yeah. I was like, mm, yeah, that's the sticks. I like it. That's why we appreciate Melissa McCarthy because uh, she did well. Right. I thought she did a great job. She could get up there and do anything, anything. though, and I would yeah. be happy. I also just love that J Lo was there. Like J Lo yeah. is so classy and stunning. She looked like a huge disco ball. Right. But I was okay with that. She's I was everywhere, like, though. But I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm okay with it. Bring too. J Lo out. I felt like it added a little bit of something that wouldn't have been there otherwise. I, I actually thought my favorite presenters were Jason Moa and Helen Mirren. Yes. Because oh, yeah. anyone else want to watch them in a movie where they get stranded yes. on Desert Island yeah. together? Yeah. Yeah. Like, hot couple alert wow. right there. Let's get that movie made. Helen Mirren, Jason Moa. Yeah. Okay. They, yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah. I'm just, just going to end it. Yeah. 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 Button that up. <laughs> All right, now we got to talk about the controversies, of course, with mm. the Best Picture winner, Green Book. This was shocking to me. I literally, everything was on a high for me, and then that moment happened. I'm like, what? What? It was, it was shocking. I think, I mean, there's been controversies all the way just because of the way that it was filmed. Right. Um, a lot of people were upset with the, the way that they portrayed the story itself. Mm -hmm. they, the family of Don uh, Shirley, Shirley mm -hmm. wasn't contacted until after they finished it. A lot of people feel like it just sort of like served up a feel good thing for white people to sort of say, here's, here's you know, white saviors on a platter. Right. And well, they so, did. People just didn't feel that way. That's yeah. what they did. Well, you look yeah. at the Academy, too. It is predominantly white and male yeah. still. And so you're looking at who's voting. Well, it's you're changing. Who's, who's on that stage, too. When they when they won up there, it was uh, that, a lot of white people. Green right. <laughs> Book is Oscars bait, a m movie yes. made by white people about race relations in America. Exactly. You're going to win that Tough Oscar stuff. because that is right. what the Oscars love. And yep. I didn't see the movie because his family didn't co-sign it. And for mm -hmm. me, that was such a big part. If you're telling this man's story, I felt like it needed to come from his journals or his own personal experience, and yeah. it didn't. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why I chose not to see it. But we actually, on our week and watch show, we had Christopher Rosen who talks a lot about film and he was explaining how people vote. And so very rarely that first choice actually gets picked. A lot of the 
the Times, it's mm -hmm. the second or third choice. Mm -hmm. So the Green Book was sort of a safe bet that I think was a lot of people's second or third choice for best right. film, and that's why it ended up winning. I don't think it's because the Academy really thought it was that right. amazing of a film. It's right. kind of like right. how we got Trump as president. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they don't all come together and just like <laughs> take a vote. It's it's all anonymous. Yeah. But I was so disappointed. I really was looking forward to Roma. I was convinced. Yes. I really mm. was convinced that it was going to take home that top yeah, prize. I mean, I mean, we've been watching the rise of Netflix, and they're just taking yes. over our lives. Soon we'll be <laughs> bowing down to the throne of Ted Sarandos. But um, I think are. Roma is a really... A, it is not made for the average American viewer, but it is really exceptionally well done film that that mm -hmm. really captures this moment in time, but also is extremely relevant to the stories of, of course, immigrants mm -hmm. and Im immigration, but also domestic workers and the roles that domestic workers of colors play in these predominantly white families. I really loved Roma. At I the end too. of it, I was totally tearing up. There's a final scene of them on the beach, and I was like, <laughs> like ugly crying a little bit. This is really sweet. So I thought maybe there's not a working Roma. class Mexican woman. It, it's <laughs> yeah. I really, bo I really <laughs> bonded with Roma. It's guys. Well, story. They yeah. did. They did pick up quite a few awards. They Netflix did. did. I mean, and especially for best director, that was another big surprise for me too. I was mm -hmm. really wanting Spike Lee to win, but I also couldn't be mad that yeah, Alfonso won as well. Kind of, it was a beautiful. Oh, film. it was. It was yeah. a Stunning. slow film, yeah. Yeah. but it was beautiful. It was a film that Brittany and I both admittedly fell asleep in. That we <laughs> did not finish. But it was beautiful. Dude, you have to watch it. The wow. first hour I watched was, um, it's yeah. good. You, you can appreciate it. That first it. half, when you're starting to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Spike Lee did have some really cute moments yeah, at the totally, award show. Yeah. I loved how much he was hamming it up with yeah. drinks. I loved his message when he won. I loved him jumping into Yes, yes that was yeah. the moment. Oh, that's so sweet. I love when him and Bette Miller had that moment about both being from Brooklyn. Too. Babs, oh. it was Barbara. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say that because I love yeah. both of them and they had this Brooklyn moment. And I was like, yes, yeah. Babs. I it's just my old Ladies, it is just so satisfying to see someone who we've loved for 30 years yeah. to finally get their moment, and this was his moment, and I, I lived for it. I just ah, I just wanted him to win Best Director yeah. so badly. The movie is fantastic oh, as yeah. well, so, so it's, he was very, very well deserved at that yeah. time. My mm -hmm. favorite speech of the night was Olivia Coleman. Oh, oh so good. Good. It was so the good. most like earnest, giggly, like flubbering, flailing. <laughs> like, it was so cute and endearing, and like I want her to win an Oscar just for that speech. Speech. It yeah. was, and like just ending it with like, Lady Gaga! Yeah. <laughs> like it was amazing. I think you it's want, because she wasn't she wasn't yeah. expecting it. Right. Everybody yeah. thought Glenn Close. You want yeah. the underdog so yes. often, and, and she did it justice. You yeah. know what I mean? You want one of those speeches to sort of bring it home where you're like, I love you, I love what you just did. But I yeah. feel like she did it in a way that only a British woman can. Like uh -huh. the only other woman who's given a speech like this is Adele. I was just gonna say the same thing. And you're thing. like True. so happy for them, even though that's not who you thought was gonna win. I'm like, this is who I wanted to win. I yeah. didn't even know it. Cause she was uh. so, it meant so much to her. When she even thanked her parents, she was like, my parents, Oh, well, you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I even get through it. A little yes. self-deprecating. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. She was yeah. like, Glenn Coase, I, I didn't want it to be this yeah. way. That's yeah. what I mean. Glenn Beyonce. was like, so cute. <laughs> exactly. No, speak, I mean, I really thought Glenn was going to win, though I did love the favorite and I loved Olivia Coleman. I was kind of sad for Glenn because she's been nominated so many times. Oh, but yeah. 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 she'll win one. I also thought I really loved Glenn Close's cape. There were oh, a lot of great capes. So, yeah. oh, boy. Secret winner of the Oscars, capes. capes. They made a comeback. A lot of had a super, yeah. Cape well then, and, and then Olivia Coleman closer. had a cape too, kind of mm, like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, capes are coming back, guys. Glenn, get, them, get them now. Glenn Close's look made her loss all the money. Wait, because right. right. she, she yeah. dressed up like as an Oscar. Oscar. Yeah. First yeah. Time, it's like you're gonna wear all gold and win the, your first Oscar at 71 and have this amazing moment, and she just sat there like. Right. It's so of tough. It's, it's tough yeah. to watch because I wanted her to win, and then you see Olivia, and you're like, "But I also want." But I would have won. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Like, Olivia's great. Glenn Close won. I mean, like in all of our hearts. In life, we right. all that won. dress. <laughs> <laughs> that dress, guys, weighed 42 pounds. Wow. That's wow. insane. Yeah. Like, She's doing I mean, honestly, a round of applause for yeah. Glenn Close. Yeah. 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 I mean, wow. really. Superhero. Um, Lady Gaga, another big winner, another big moment. Uh, I mean, yeah. the moment I think of the Oscars. Yeah. Oh, oh! oh. It seems like we have some feelings about this, Brittany. I, I support. It. It was just like very dramatic. It was. So the, their dramatic. voices were beautiful. It, they created this moment where they walked up on stage. I've never seen something like that. I like it. It was just like so dramatic. Yeah. It felt and we're not in the movie. In. I love it. I, I like to it. it. Like, I was the like... place to be dramatic. Yeah. You know where you shouldn't be dramatic? The workplace. <laughs> the Oscars. That's your time. This is about good performances. I thought they nailed it. I love their chemistry. I would eat that shit with and, a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was kind of creepy. I, I, Why? The shadow faces. It, it, 
creeped me out. And when, yeah. they, and when it was just their two huge heads, and like, are they gonna kiss? Are they not gonna kiss? In the camera. There's his girlfriend right there. Like, yeah. that was it. the oh, worst. Oh, there's anything creepy about that. Are you afraid of love? <laughs> I mean, that wasn't creepy? love. For me, it was the love. slow camera zoom into their faces touching. Just yeah. felt oh, like a I, thought it was... I love that entrance from the stage. That was yeah. from the audience. Well, we knew... so low key that obviously they were up to the. The drama of it was good. Yeah. And we knew Bradley Cooper said that they wanted to do something interesting, so we kind yeah. of right. could expect this was a little bit different. And I, mm -hmm. I, I was into it. I mean, I was really impressed. Of course, Lady Gaga is an exceptional singer. I was really impressed by Bradley Cooper. I was. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. not easy, great. especially for an actor. But I, I enjoyed it. I was more like the, 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 the rows of shadow faces watching that. I was <laughs> like, whoa. Like, Glenn Close is there, just like a shadow <laughs> looking at Lady Gaga. And I was like, it's kind of a little bit intimidating, but maybe they were trying to recreate the movie yeah. when, when yeah. it's from That's the... That's what I thought the day, was just, As you yeah. were talking, it was like, that was the end of the movie when right. she's singing and they're looking, right. so, okay. Yeah, no, and it was really well done. We've seen them perform this song. We've seen Lady Gaga at the Grammys do it. I mean, they had to do something different, and I thought the fact that it was understated was just right. perfect. I mean, she didn't even change into, like, in another yeah. elaborate outfit. She kept that right. giant 128-carat right. diamond it was there. Casual. It was <laughs> very casual, yes. I, I loved it, but, I mean, the tabloids also went crazy. Do they we really fueled. think there's something going on? No. I hope not. No. I don't they fueled so. it. I don't think there is anything going on, but they fueled it intentionally. Ah, yeah, because we're talking yeah. about it now. I, I see what they did there. Well, yeah. it's smart. It's brilliant. It's, it's the Matrix, people. Right. Stop being puppets. <laughs> Wake up. But I, I guess I also don't buy her earnestness in a way. Like, really? comparing her speech, her acceptance speech, That's to Olivia right. Coleman's. Like, right. I just feel like she wanted to have a moment. And she all of a sudden was like, okay, let's say something about, you know, being creative and about fighting for your dream. And like, I didn't buy it. Okay, but let's be real. Like, Olivia Coleman was not expecting to win. Yeah. And so it was just a moment. Yeah. Everyone also, knew Lady Gaga was going to win. But she should have had a better speech like, then. It's still her first two Oscar. two people. You can't yeah. compare Lady Gaga to Olivia. They're just like, they don't come totally from the same different. place. Like, Lady Gaga's whole fucking, like, right. being, not just her brand, like, who she is, yes. is this girl from New York who has always lived and breathed Broadway and right. drama. So she's Olivia won a million awards. Like, it's so weird for us to compare people right. who are not cut from the same cloth. But that's it's what we fair. do. You just made your <laughs> dad. <laughs> like, that's our job. You, you know, like, like, yeah, but, well, it doesn't have to be. Like, we are all individuals. And like, if I'm comparing myself to Lucas, oh. then I'm setting myself up for failure. Like, <laughs> I there's room for us to love Olivia for being this quirky, like, quiet little yeah. woman, and loving Gaga for being like super extra. And we need extra people in this world. She wasn't extra enough for me, though. She came out there so earnest and sort of like I felt like. She she had like dimmed her light a little bit and she was like, look, look, I'm one of you, Hollywood. Huh. I don't want that. Well, I want her to be the badass. I want her to be the rebel. And I feel like she's lost well, that. Like she, I and I miss it. I, I disagree. mean, I felt, I was super inspired by her speech. It like really, I thought she was really happy about it. And like, I left yeah. feeling like energized. Well, I actually thought of, of all her acceptance speeches, this was the best one because mm. that was the one that for me, I believe should be most thankful to. Like, I did not appreciate the Grammy crying. You are multi-platinum winning right. artist who's won six Grammys. You knew you were going to win a Grammy. Right. You don't need to cry then. Oscar, I was like, <laughs> this was what she was working for. Yeah. I also think just because Lady Gaga, this is no fault of hers, it's been so long a promotion of The Star is Born. Yeah. And it's been eight months and there's 100 people in the room and 99 don't believe in you. So yeah. we've had we're all fatigued. this. Mm -hmm. So we're a little fatigued. Yep. But this was the one she deserved. And the one I believed was like, this is the one little Lady Gaga in New York was like looking in the mirror like, I'm going to win yeah. an Oscar. Absolutely. Right, right, I, right. I was but the rumor that. is that she she didn't win Best Oscar because so many voters were turned off Best by Best Actress. I mean, yeah. Best Actress because they were turned off by the way that she's been sort of promoting herself and they yeah. don't really feel she like that's her. She didn't measure up to Glenn. No, yeah. she didn't. Exactly. She didn't, but, but a lot of people. I do think we're fatigued with the whole Star is Born phenomenon. 100%. Which is not her fault. That's a yeah. studio. Yeah, that's not her fault. Yeah, that's again, again, the, the Matrix. Out. Stop yeah. being puppets. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we guys think for next year? I mean, no host. Is this the way to go? Do we, what do we think about the controversies? What can the Oscars learn from this? Oh, can I also have one more shout out we can talk about? Yes, Regina King winning. Oh, oh yeah. yes, yes. yes. That, was, that was so well deserved. And someone, like, we've watched it from Miss Congeniality too, and like, <laughs> and like legal, Legally Blonde too, to now winning like. But like 227 and yeah. Friday. Oh, like, she's yeah. been an icon She's been an amazing for actress. Decades. And, and she was on the American Crime on ABC, yeah. which was exceptional, so she won Emmys for. So to see her now winning the Academy Award was, was a great moment for people who've seen her career and for women of color yeah. and like mm -hmm. there's you know her like there was a lot of people of color won last night so that was a, that was a Actually, great the most, highlight the yeah. most ever yeah. from the academy which is yeah. which is huge and Perfect. also the most women won right. yeah. Yeah. For, i mean and this is going from behind the scenes too because we obviously have the actors and actors categories but behind the scenes women won the most this right. than they ever have 
So it was a, it was a great the, it was a great. So we should keep moving in that direction going yes. forward. I would say <laughs> like it seems like they're answering a few of these calls. Obviously, we're still talking about all these firsts, so we're not where we want to be, but I think we're on the right path. And if right. we see that next year, that would be refreshing. And it looks like since ratings were up, Oscars, <laughs> you don't need to change the format necessarily, like adding a popular film category, taking it away. Right. You just need to have better representation of people and of films, and then more people want to watch. I think that's mm -hmm. what we've learned also is that it, it, it just... Just don't have just white people winning awards yeah. in boring yeah. movies. Tell like, different stories. Right. Tell different I mean, stories. There was yeah. such a diverse class in that best right. picture. I mean, we had all different walks of life. Yeah. And the more diverse the stories are, the better we are watching right. as viewers, too. And I think I think they learned from their past criticisms on that, went forward, and I think they can continue to do that. I think yeah. we've also found with ratings, when you have mm -hmm. different narratives being told in those big picture yeah. categories, that more viewers are going to tune in because they've actually right. seen those films they and connected to them and they right. want them to win, versus all mm -hmm. these high art films that people just maybe yeah. didn't connect to. Oh, the, the artist a couple of years ago? Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. The Oscars rose, um, their viewership rose 14% yeah. for the right. first time right. in five years. So. And and like Black Panther won the, what three awards, including Did best costume design, yeah. um, um, Ruth first Carter black, and yes. Beachler. first black woman ever to yeah. win best yep. costume. I mean that's like in Spider Man into the Spider Verse yeah. one, yeah. first Spider yeah. Man ever wins. Yeah. Also, three of the four best acting category wins were for queer characters. Yeah. Which yeah. Were, yeah. Played by non queer people. That's, yeah, well, that's, that's a whole thing. We're getting there. Baby's yeah. got yeah. it. Come back to the next segment. That's next a good point. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> really good point. Well, yeah, yeah, guys, this was so much fun. Yeah. I mean, thanks for all thank they, oh, I love to talk about the Oscars. Thank you. Right. Thank you for having us. Well, the Michael Jackson estate is suing HBO over the controversial documentary Leaving Neverland, which follows two accusations of sexual abuse against the singer. Let's take a look at the two part documentary, which airs on March 3rd and 4th. Everybody wanted to meet Michael or be with Michael. And then he likes you. I was seven years old. Michael asked, do you and the family want to come to Neverland? We drive in and forget about all your problems. You were in Neverland. It was a fantasy. The days were filled with magical childhood adventure experiences. Playing tag, watching movies, eating junk food, anything you could ever want as a child. It's like hanging out with a friend that's more your age. Just kid things. They were just doing kid things. He just came across as a loving, caring, kind soul. It was easy to believe that he was just that. Out of a storybook, right? Out of a fairy tale. Hello, Wade. Today is your birthday. So congratulations. I love you. Goodbye. There's no thoughts of this is wrong or anything like that. He told me if they ever found out what we were doing, he and I would go to jail for the rest of our lives. Secrets will eat you up. You feel so alone. I want to be able to speak the truth as loud as I had to speak the lie for so long. Are we gonna cancel Michael Jackson Ooh. like we did everyone else? Like, or do we? What's? Uh, what do we this do? This is a hard one. This, this is, is a, difficult. This is difficult. But this also isn't new. I mean, from oh. pretty much the entire, uh, my entire life, yeah. I feel like I've always known Michael Jackson and also known of this controversy okay. about, you know, the claims of abuse. So it's not like all of a sudden he's passed away and people are coming to ruin his legacy. I do not think that this is the vibe. And the two men who are uh, in the film have uh, has specifically said this is not to take him down. What? It's more to us have the opportunity to share our story and hopefully help future kids avoid abuse I and agree. families because the whole situation with this Michael Jackson um, these Michael Jackson claims is that he was really close with these families mm -hmm. he would he would talk to the moms on the phone they'd come over for dinner like they, he was like a family friend and if you watch abduction in plain sight yeah. you know that's how they get you well it's grooming and he had he had an entire theme park for children, I mean, it's like the epitome of grooming. So when you look at all but the facts, wait, like, can I ask up, something? yeah, I thought grooming 
was when you like start seeing someone when they're younger in the hopes of then when they're older being with them. Or getting them to trust you. Yeah. Okay. So the timeline differs, but it's like getting this person to trust you so that they come to your house and their parents aren't there and they feel safe with you and then you're free to do whatever you want to do. Right. But like Shannon, I grew up hearing these rumors, but when he was alive, he was really able to pay off these families and sort of squash things, I think intimidate people. And now that he is gone, I think people are now feeling more empowered to speak well, out, which is well, why we're hearing this now. And, and, and we should, we should, I want to, there's so many different facets of the story that I would like to talk about, but I also feel like I need to represent the, the estate's defense of what they've now gone against this film, which, and this is not just them, the Hollywood Reporter is also giving this review of this film. This film is very one-sided on of purpose. Course. The director just interviews the, these two men and their families. It's not going to any people that knew Michael Jackson, knew anyone else outside this. These two men also actually denied allegations up until very recently, until the state accuses one of them, he was denied a job on the Circus Olay Michael Jackson right. tour. So the state is saying these are people searching for attention, that they've denied these accusations, they were part of the denying of the accusations, and now recently come out to tell the story. Now, Michael Jackson, as anyone who's seen me at a wedding or bar mitzvah knows, he is my go-to dance move. So this will be difficult to watch, and I, and, I, and I will watch it. I think he is someone who, who we all know um, when we were growing up, you know, in the 90s when he did pay people off in the early 2000s when he went through court and then was eventually acquitted. Um, he had a very difficult life and a very difficult a lack of a childhood, abuse from his father, and abuse from a society that called him ugly, um, who demeaned him. He was both the most famous person in the world and the most tortured person in the world. I think that we are, this is an interesting conversation that a person who is dead, um, will he suffer the consequences? Will it even matter because he's not around anymore? Is it fair because he's not around anymore? He can't defend himself. Mm. So it's gonna be interesting to watch and see how this plays out um, when it appears on HBO. It's a tough one. You know, I personally don't think people will stop listening to his music because people didn't stop listening to his music when he was alive and right. all these accusa accusations kept coming up and we all know where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't think people will actually stop listening to his music. I'm with Shannon. I I think it's an opportunity for people who felt victimized or targeted to know that they have a voice and know mm -hmm. that they can stand up and they don't have to stay quiet regardless of who their abuser is. Right. I think that will be more the takeaway because his music is, I'm sorry, I don't think people no, will stop he is the no. most. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so either. And I don't know that I'm necessarily interested in hearing him like defend himself because he, it wasn't like he didn't have opportunities to talk about this or respond when he yeah, was alive. He yeah. And I feel like if we've learned and. Actually, it's so tricky, but I feel like it's best to go forward with believing people, and well, this is a chance to just hear stories that have been quieted for so long. So I feel like yeah. the focus is on on hearing those stories, not so much on like what would Michael have said. Right. I agree. I feel like people jump to be very concerned and worried about people who are accused of abuse, and I think that that's kind of weird, honestly. That we immediately are like, what's going to happen to this person's career? Right. I'm like, someone came out, and in this case, many people came out saying that they have suffered abuse and instead of worrying about how they're dealing with it how their entire lifetime has been affected about it how they're never gonna get over this even if they can like conquer it um, you're still worried about someone's career like selling yeah. albums Michael Jackson is fine okay yeah. he is fine we do not need to worry about him I don't think that it's be gonna, gonna become irresponsible where people are slandering him in the streets we are both fans of him and unfortunately very disappointed with but, yeah. what we think has happened. One right. of the men in the doc is Wade Robson, yeah. who, back to your point, he met him as a kid and he was like a Michael Jackson impersonator. So a lot of Wade's career was dependent up, uh, sure. upon Michael. So for him to speak out against Michael would have been to his detriment. So I think that also explains why, why some people decide to stay silent because that he was feeding his family. I mean, Wade Robinson became one of the top choreographers and was booking gigs. If he were to speak mm -hmm. out, what would that mean for his right. livelihood? Yeah, yeah I, th I think, and also the way this documentary, it really isn't really totally about Michael, it's really about these people and their families. Yeah. So I think that is what to take away from it. And also, um, it just kind of, you know, we're in this time just because of, sadly, the, the Jesse Smollett scandal, what happened, and, and okay. Brittany retweeted this video. There's this, this MSNBC analyst named Serlina well, Maxwell who um, talks about how the important thing is to have empathy. We should always have empathy to victims. Yeah. And you are not the trial, you are not the judge, you are not the jury, but to have empathy towards people who come 
come forward and express what has happened to them, whether they suffer hate crimes or assault or, or, or anything of that, of that sort. So I think that's important, that we should always have empathy towards people. We are not, no one's going to be put in jail because of this documentary. No one's, Michael yeah. Jackson's probably not going to, the state's probably not going to get that much of a hit. Yeah. Probably, most likely. <laughs> no, really, but these two people will come yeah. forward and we will have empathy towards them and have a better understanding of people who do go through sexual assault. And we can so, learn how to prevent it. I mean, he's right. not the only mega star powerful man who right. has abused children. Look at R. Kelly. Like, this yeah. is obviously something that happens. So I think having the conversation is important. Yeah. Right. And there's and there's still like in the news of, of people uh, of the you know some of the Patriots, whatever, and the coach yeah. owner who was involved yeah. in you know young girls. And there's this is a, this is a big problem. And I think you know it's and it's also it's also look at you know I think of the look at the president. Look at the president. <laughs> well, I don't want to say anything, but allegedly, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm here but for it. but um, you know the Whitney documentary uh -huh. also showed a very tortured icon. I mean, we these, these these class of people, you know, Whitney, Michael, Prince, you know, I, and they all suffered. Madonna's in there too, but she has she's still around, has yeah. the different problems, but clearly not yeah. to the extent they had. And what what why is that? I don't know. Michael didn't have a child, or Whitney was abused, and maybe Madonna just had. Did different background, yeah. became famous later, older. You well, know? I think it's interesting. I think all of them had their own turmoil. It's right. interesting in how they decided right. to uh, deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Some hurt other people. Some hurt themselves. Yeah. Whitney just hurt herself. Really. Yeah. Whitney hurts. Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. But it is makes you look at fame and the trauma. Totally. Yeah. With it in yeah. a whole different view. But I, it also makes you realize how many people have suffered from child abuse yeah. and how rampant it is and how I mean. I alone know more people that that have been abused than not. And yeah. that's very scary. And those are just the people who have been brave enough to come out. So obviously, like, our society has a huge issue. So I will never quiet anyone who wants to speak out. I will never shun them or accuse them for needing attention because this is not the type of attention that any human being would ever no. want. Right. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. 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 Uh, empathy is very important. Very important. You guys, on another note, we all know winter's coming this April with the season eight premiere of Game of Thrones, but news of an Urban Decay Game of Thrones makeup line just dropped as well. So fans can now recreate their favorite looks from Westeros. Oh! Ooh. Saying I can look like Daenerys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, is that who you'd want to go to Daenerys look? Oh, Daenerys' look for me is like who so sexy and strong. Look? Carl, Carl think, Drogo, of course. Oh, oh smoky eye. Yeah. Smoke. Smoke eye. Oh, he's actually the character, I think, who wears the most makeup yeah. throughout the entire series. What's really funny is the series, they don't really have a lot of makeup because it's like back in the day. <laughs> but I really want to get um, the Arya Stark palette. Yeah. I've heard it comes with a knife and a list of people to kill. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But I'm fun. Oh. He's walking through the streets, <laughs> muttering just to different people. Yeah. <laughs> Allie, Lucas, <laughs> Brittany. Oh, God. No, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the. Um, actually, oh. you know who has? You know, because um, if you remember season seven, you're on Greyjoy, who's Theon's oh, uncle. He, he comes good. back with eyeliner, and you're like, damn, boy, got some <laughs> eyeliner and all black look meeting Cersei. You're like, Trauma. okay, Trauma. that looks good. <laughs> also, shout out to the warlocks of Karth. Remember those bald oh, guys yeah. with the purple lips oh, and everything? Oh, yeah. I had nightmares about them when I first watched that episode. You know, those those boys wearing those. Robes, they can get it. Maybe they'll do a great. What about the people with the starry wow. skin? A oh, gray scale? Oh, yeah, yeah, Maybe gray that scale could be a tone palette. palette. I, was just say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would love that. Yeah. A nice textured yeah. look on your eyelids, and people right. are like, is the winter on your face flaking off? Right. And you're like, yeah, I don't know. I, I tried the Game of Thrones look. That's Khaleesi's. What's Khaleesi's like main guy who loves her? So Jorah Mormont. Yeah. yeah. So Jorah also, hey, I wouldn't mind if Shannon walked in as the Night King. I mean, that. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. I see blues. I see blues. Shannon in white face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh my god, I would love to be a white Riding, a, riding a dead dragon. Oh, wow. And then lose all that extra weight. And like, oh, yeah, it would look so hot. I love this uh, makeup idea, but I also their hair for me is always like the mm. biggest. So I can't wait for somebody to come up with a line of wigs that are just like all their yes. braided looks. Lots well, of braided looks. Well, when yeah. you watch the show, you see the subtle changes they make, especially in Daenerys and Sansa's looks. Yeah. Like Sansa, Cersei. Well, Cersei Cersei's too, clothing. but Sansa, they always talk about how when the different women in her life influence her, when it's her mother, she looks yeah. like her mother, when it's Cersei, it's Cersei, when it's Marjorie, it's Marjorie, and then at the end, she has her own look, yeah. which is like a really cool evolution of I that character. But now she's meeting that Daenerys. Yeah, I feel okay. that. Mm -hmm. Now she's meeting Daenerys, and Daenerys comes yes. from like a whole different world, so maybe she'll like spice things we'll up. And Daenerys, uh, Amelia Clark, last night on the red carpet, they said, what are we going to expect? What's to expect? I know you can't give anything away. And she goes, you know what? People are going to be shocked. Really? I That's can't unbelievable. believe it. Shocked. Shocked. Oh, not happy. Not, not sad. Shocked. Shocked. Well, I, I would also want um, a, a clothing line. Like, I wanted yes. to like, wear like a wildling jacket. <laughs> yeah. Be like, you don't know shit, Jon Snow. <laughs> so, yeah, what? But yeah. like fake fur. 
Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, go I for it. Uh, it's vegan. It's 2019. Vegan wildly. <laughs> little finger me. He was awful, but he had really good fitting robes. My little finger was such a little. Little, yeah, oh, little yeah. finger. They should sell like just like a doll, like a, like a doll of him, and so you could just like stab him. Yeah. Or if they're bad at work, you just be like, just little finger. The, that was He's the like, best. Star. It's season it's seven. It's normal for me one to sleep with your sister. Gross. I loved your mother. Now I love you. Doll with the Arya kit. Oh yeah, that would make sense. Oh my god, that'd be so good. Oh, excuse me. What about the hound? When you want the hound's look, which is just like half burned. I'm forgetting that. He's burned. It's like just like all crispified. Oh yeah. Maybe the, 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 the dark joke. I made a dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the a nerdy dark cover joke. Up. The Honestly, hound cover up. I had acne so bad in 2016 that I looked just like the hound. Uh -huh. I was like, somebody <laughs> cast me. That was my Jim Carrey impression. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Ah! Good job. <laughs> Good job. Oh man. <laughs> well, moving on. Now it's time for today's guest. Quinn Walters is a Chicago-born actress who's been performing since she was eight years old. Today she's here to talk about Medea Family Funeral, the highly anticipated finale to the Tyler Perry-led franchise. Take a look. The Bible say, yea, though she walked in the valley with the shadow of little Red Riding Hood and the three bears, she feared no evil, because the three little pigs was not around. Amen. And hallelujah. How you doing, baby? I'm OK. Well, you look bad. We here because your dad is dead. Now I'm coordinating the funeral. I hope y'all can appreciate what I'm going to try to do. And if you need anything, just let us know. I know it's about funerals. I done buried a lot of men. A lot of them. That funeral gonna be messed up. <laughs> Are you ready for a miracle? Are you ready for a miracle? You're about to get shot. This is the church. If you come up here with that bull, I don't mind busting you in your face, throwing ass to Jesus to forgive me. Oh my God. Oh, I'm a real thug. I'm an O-G-M-A-D-E-A. Are you ready for a miracle? We're sorry. Apparently, he was taking some sort of stimulant. <laughs> We're having some trouble keeping it down. I want to know if he's an organ donor. Everyone, please put your hands together for Quinn Walters. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Quinn, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. Good. We love your energy already. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Just thank you for smiles. having me. And I think you're probably energetic because you're part of this amazing film. The cast looks spectacular. So how did you get involved with Medea Family Funeral? I did an old-fashioned audition. <laughs> <laughs> how it works. Yeah, so yeah. it works. <laughs> yeah, you go in a room, you do your lines, and maybe you'll get the part. So yeah, I auditioned for the role. Um, it was amazing. Like you said, the cast was so awesome. Hilarious. Tyler Perry is like one of the funniest people on the planet. Yeah. And it was just the best experience. Like, we're all still friends. I love that. Yeah. And he said he's going to retire Medea after this film. So, this is a really big one to be a part of. It is. And I feel like um, it's like bittersweet. Like, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm like, yes, this is the last one. Everybody's talking about going to go see it. This is great. But I'm like, it's gonna be the last, uh, I, I can't be in two, <laughs> uh, you know? Can somebody else die and we all come back? <laughs> and, you know, so yeah, it's, it's all good though. Yeah, and you play Renee, so tell us about that character. Well, let's get <laughs> well. into Renee. All right. <laughs> um, Renee is actually a friend of the family, so the family all gets together, they're having a reunion. Somebody dies. Mm -hmm. That's not a spoiler. It's called funeral. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so somebody dies, and then all these secrets, these family secrets start mm. to unravel and come out, and the skeletons, and Renee is a part of those skeletons. Uh-oh. Oh. Without giving it away, that's... So that's she's kind of messy? She is. So wait, do you have some scenes I mean, in with Medea, then? You no, know, she <laughs> might be a little messy. Maybe. <laughs> you have to see. Does Medea go in on her? Because that's my favorite when Medea just lays into somebody. You know what? She she did she okay. did she did read uh -huh. Renee right oh. a little bit. Oh. I'll be watching. <laughs> oh, we got we love it with Medea Reed. Speaking of, so the, were you a fan of the franchise before auditioning? Absolutely, right. I was. I've seen all the Medea movies. <laughs> so was it intimidating then auditioning for this incredible franchise, also for Tyler Perry, who is like basically a king? I mean, yeah. pretty much, right? He's the king. He's King Tyler Perry. What was that like? You know what? When you audition. Some, sometimes the director is there, but when I auditioned, he wasn't. So mm. the actual audition, I wasn't right. feeling that intimidation. However, when I got to set, 
you know, Tyler Perry is this tall man. He's like six five, six yeah, six. He's yeah. so he's so massive and just such a presence. But he's so warm and he's so positive. And the one thing that I loved about him that I've never experienced on any set before is he holds a prayer. And I don't know. I mm. hope I'm okay saying this, Tyler. I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> if you're like that's our personal business. But for me, it was special because it like sets the tone. Like even if you're not necessarily with the same religious background or spiritual whatever. It just sets a tone of positivity. Mm -hmm. Everyone's on the same page. Everyone's like, we're all in this together. We're going to go shoot a great thing. And everyone's respectful. It just sets the stage for just a positive day. Right. That's I love really that. Nice. And yeah. was there any difference in interacting him when he's in his Medea makeup <laughs> versus when he's just like Tyler Perry? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you hear the voice? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it was cool because he would he would be in character. Right. And we're, we're doing our scene. And then he, he was or now, he didn't say cut if he, we were in a scene. The uh, first AD would, but cut. And then he changes his voice, and uh -huh. he's back to Tyler. And it's just like, wow, huh? That's huh? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. That, that's his real voice. Because right. you get wrapped up. And, you're, and, he's, and he's so committed. He's so focused on what he's doing and who, he, who he's playing that you get wrapped up. And you're like, oh, he's that guy. He's Uncle Heathrow. He's yeah. Medea. Right. And then he can flip like that. Wow. And all right, um, Quinn, uh, <laughs> make sure you come over here. And you're like, oh, OK, OK. Got it. <laughs> That's so fun. That yeah. really is. And you grew up in Chicago? Born and raised. So tell us what it was like to, how did you get into acting growing up there? Um, I started acting when I was eight. So wow. plays and church plays, school plays, and all that. And then um, I actually graduated with a BFA. Bachelor of Fine Arts from the University of Illinois. And then I worked for a year, and then I moved to LA. Mm -hmm. You know, got me an agent, mm -hmm. manager, and all that, and just did the whole, the whole thing. Regular okay. grind. <laughs> and were your have your parents been supportive of your, your choice oh, to oh act? Oh my God, my parents. <laughs> hi, mommy, hi, daddy. I love you. <laughs> um, the most supportive parents ever. That. So I'll tell this quick story. I don't know how much time we got. We got time. I got to, oh, well, <laughs> <Yeah. let> me, <laughs> let me get comfortable. Want a drink? Um, <laughs> uh, um, so when I entered college, I was pre-med. Like, I love science, wow. really good at science. That was my passion. So I wanted to be a pediatrician, all good. I went to a school that was big on medicine, cool. However, I wasn't as strong mm -hmm. in chemistry as I was in biology <laughs> and other subjects, right? So I got a bad grade for the first time in life. I was a straight A student my whole life. And so then I get this bad grade. And my dad was like, yeah, um, so you're not going to be a doctor. Because <laughs> clearly, you're not smart enough. <laughs> like, no shade. But he was keeping that's it 100. Honesty, yo. And that's all you can ask yeah, for. Yeah. Can ask and so he was like, so you're going to do theater. Because that's what you're good at. That's what you've been doing since you were a kid. Right. You always put on dress clothes. You put on your mom's wig. Well, my mom didn't have wigs. But I would. <laughs> my, my mom has beautiful hair, mom. She didn't wear <laughs> wigs, but there will Thank be some wigs. Fine. <laughs> right. And so, you know, dress up and do characters and recite uh, movies. Color purple, <laughs> favorite. Yes. Uh, um, I still do it. And so, yeah, they always supported me. So he literally took me from medicine to drama and smooth sailing. Wow. That's so awesome. Wow. Yeah. Full support. They're my number one fans. That's pretty awesome. That yeah. Is. And you don't you don't just act, you also you direct, you produce. I do. You do everything? I I try. <laughs> I mean Sky's the limit. Yeah. You know what I mean? We create our own boundaries. So um, anything you say you can do, you can do, you will do. So I just get up and I do it. Mm. Oh, well, yeah. tell us. What's that next? <laughs> <laughs> what's next um, for you? I'm currently directing, uh, producing a documentary. I'm going to wait to you know, give you guys more. But um, I'm really excited about this project. It's a passion project. And um, I feel like it's going to be inspirational and really probably, hopefully, change some lives. Oh. Um, it's a social conscious documentary. So Very that cool. and um, yeah, just some other works down the pike. Um, I write shorts. Uh, I'm working on a pilot. I'm 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 just inspired. I just feel like the time is now to be creative. Mm -hmm. So many different yeah. entities are looking for content and looking for content creators. So I'm just trying to like get on board with that and just not miss the train. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're doing it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for joining us today, Chris. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And everyone, make sure to check out a Medea family funeral in theaters March 1st. That's all from us today. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table.